स्टूडेंट स्कॉलर्स इन एसोसिएशन विद गोवा हेडमास्टर्स एसोसिएशन good day students and welcome for the history class in the previous lesson that is early trade activities we had already studied about the how the trade was there and that led to imperialism and colonialism and this imperialism and colonialism later on led to the freedom movements ha huh? why because the other countries were ruling over the colonies and the colonies had to free themselves so today students we are going to start with the topic american war of independence this is our history topic lesson number 4 american war of independence what are we going to study in this lesson we are going to see about the brief introduction discovery of america causes for the conflict between england and the colonies major events of the american revolution and significance of the american revolution now out of these topics what we are going to do in the first unit is brief introduction discovery of america and causes for the conflict between england and the colonies students you all are familiar with the indian independence movement as we have already studied in 8th standard how the britishers came here as traders slowly slowly from trade to territory they started conquering the areas and later on we fought the freedom movement right from the revolt of 1857 till 1947 we had our freedom movement and finally on 15th of august 1947 india became independent in the similar way as india after independence became a nation state a uh, year also we are going to have a introduction about the nation state the emergence of the nation states had mainly taken place in the second half of the 18th century where in europe ha huh? now how it took place ha uh, when the policy of western imperialism had first received a setback that means this was a first moment where uh, when the 13 american colonies ha uh, that the colonies were of british and so they were called as british colonies and they became independent by overthrowing the rule of the mother country ha uh, now who was the mother country here the britain or england was the mother country because they were ruling over them and after they became independent they formed what is today called as united states of america now this laid the foundation of the new political ideology in the international politics i uh, means it was not only enough or limited up till america only but it spread all over the world how the right of the people bound by geographical territory and having common cultural and historical background to form their own government our students this is very common with our country also we are united by geographical territory we have common culture common historical background and that led to the formation of the national government or the nation state you can say now though the american war of independence it took place in america that is about 3000 miles away from europe ha uh, but in spite of that though it was on a different continent ha uh, it it had a direct impact on various revolutions which took place in europe during the 18th century and this led to formation of the nation states so students here see ha uh, where the thing took place is not 
did not matter. It directly had impact in Europe and other countries of the world also. Now, in Europe, where did it start first? The new concept of the nation states was successfully established in France. These students, you all have learned in the ninth standard, the French Revolution, when the France was under the Bourbon monarchy. Uh, that is, Louis XVI was ruling over France and there the people of France had overthrown his rule and came forward with the ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity. Uh, this was introduced in France. So, after America, soon the ideas came in France also, where France also was independent. But here there is a difference. Students, in France, they had overthrown their own monarch, their own king, whereas in America, they had overthrown the foreign rule which was there on them. Now, what is a nation state? Students, we know a state. Now, when we are referring to the word state here, it is not the state like Goa, Maharashtra, Karnataka, not like that. Uh, here we are referring to the nation as a state. Now, just when we call it as a state, and what is the difference when we call it as a nation state? Let us see this now. A nation state can be defined as a sovereign state where the citizens are united. How they are united? By geographical, linguistic, and cultural factors. Now, what do we mean by this? Geographical means one territory, one language, as we say, uh, Hindi is our national language. Like, like that way, linguistically, we are united. Culturally, right from north to south, we have a common culture. Huh? Similarly, here also, we are referring to all these factors, and this is, develops a sense of unity and identity among them. Now, what is unity and identity, students? Very simple. See, when um, cricket match is going on and when India is playing, uh, we all are enthusiastic to watch the match and see that India wins in the match. Why this feeling we are having? Because there is a sense of unity which is there. We have our own identity as Indians. Uh, similarly, here also, they had their own identity, there was a sense of unity also. Now, when we are talking about a nation state, it has all these features of the state, that is population, government, territory, sovereignty, and to this is added the feature of nationalism. Now, see, when one feature is added, it makes a lot of different students. Why? Because of this, a sense of unity is created with a common historical and cultural background. Now, once again, let us highlight these points of the state and see the difference between the state and a nation state. So, in this slide, you all can see the features of the state, population, government, sovereignty and territory. These are the features of the state. Now, what is the difference between a state and a nation state? Let us see in the next slide. The nation state now. This has population, government, territory, sovereignty, but for this is added the feature of nationalism, which is very, very important. We all should be united as a nation students. Uh, otherwise, uh, we may not be successful. There is a nice saying, united we stand and divided we fall. And so, this nationalism feature is very, very important. Now, what proves that, yes, people can form their own government? There are examples, students. Here, we have American War of Independence. French Revolution, you all have studied last year. Then unification of Italy, unification of Germany. 
these are the success stories of whom of the common people where they are forming their own government now your students this is very easy to remember the power of the common people as you all have seen in the film chennai express don't underestimate the power of the common man ha uh, this dialogue you all have heard in the film now here also the same thing applies ha uh, the common people formed their own government so this was a triumph over what of nationalism over dictatorship and imperialism now dictatorship you all have learned in 9th standard you all have seen the dictatorship of hitler in germany imperialism i have already explained you all in the first lesson so this matters imperialism is what making empires making colonies is colonialism so this was overthrown and this was an inspiration to many countries so when america set up a example when france set up a example italy set up a example germany set up a example this was a inspiration for others so students we saw that how asian countries took the inspiration from the european countries from america and they also fought against the imperialistic rule freed themselves and formed their own government here we have example of our own country bharat india which free which was free from the british rule now the main topic of our today's is american war of independence so students we have seen what is a state what is a nation state how people fought that was just a brief introduction and now the actual american war of independence now it is the period from 1775 to 1783 the american war of independence is said to be the first conflict between the imperialistic country and her colonies so imperialistic country was ruling ha uh, in the colonies now the colonial people had proved that it was not impossible to overthrow the rule of the mighty and the powerful country the england was ruling over them ha uh, but still ha uh, they proved it how with their will and determination to form their own government now with their will with their determination they formed their own government this is a nice lesson we can learn students we should also have the will and determination when we are studying when we are looking out for our bright success in our life uh, we should they have the will and determination and students here it is said that it was not impossible to overthrow the rule of the mighty and the powerful country students the, in this sentence there is a word impossible i uh, see students the impossible word itself says i am possible so nothing is impossible ha uh, with this will and determination the americans formed their own government so it was for the first time in history that the people fought for their independence how with the help of the universal principles which universal principles students here you all can see the rule of law constitutional rights and the supremacy of the constitution i repeat universal principles like the rule of law constitutional rights and the supremacy of the constitution so with these principles they fought and they achieved independence now let us see how the europeans discovered america the first in the first lesson students you all have already learned can you all recall it it was the columbus who discovered america in 1492 and the further explorations were done by john cabot 
and Amerigo Vespucci. I had told you all in the previous topic that America got its name from Amerigo Vespucci. Now, what did the Europeans do? Just like India students, Europeans went there as traders and they were supported by the European rulers. The rulers naturally wanted to expand the empire, so they were supporting all these explorers. The colonies were treated as a source of commodities. And the natives, they were treated as their personal possessions. And they used to make them to work as slaves. So this they started when they started having imperialistic control over the America. Now, in this slide, students, you all can see Christopher Columbus, who discovered America in 1492. This is very important, students. So, we saw students, Christopher Columbus discovered it in 1492. John Cabot did the further explorations. This is John Cabot, you can see. And the third important person was Amerigo Vespucci. Uh, he did the explorations in the interior regions and from these persons named students America got the name as America then expansion of the colonies students you all have seen in the Indian history how one by one a state was taken or one by one empire kingdom was taken by the Britishers Similarly, Europeans first went there as traders in America. They were supported by the uh, rulers. The rulers wanted to expand their empire and the, they were treating the natives as their slaves and the colonies were important for the commodities. Now, which was the first colony they had established? Yeah, you can see Virginia was the first colony and the last colony among the 13 was the Georgia. So first one is Virginia and the last one is Georgia. Let us see them on the map. Here now students, you all can see Virginia here. This was the first colony and this is Georgia. This was the last, that is the 13th colony. These are the 13 colonies which England had acquired in America. Now, after acquiring this, how was their relationship? First, British were interested in trade and religious ideology. They wanted to trade, they wanted to spread their religion. Then slowly, British administrators started realizing the importance of the political control over the colonies. Why? Because the race for the colonies began. Huh? Along with England, there was France also who had colonies in America. And so now, the troubles were increasing. The trouble also increased. When? First, because of the competition. Second, because the natives in America had started opposing them. So what did they do? They thought of a solution for this. So the governor was appointed in each colony to have the control and they had their own legislative assembly in each colony. Why? To control the colonies. But students, as you all know, huh? Europe was very far away from America. So legally, the Americans were subjects of the British government. But in practice, in reality, they used to enjoy a large measure of autonomy, freedom. Why? Because of the geographical distance between England and them. As I told you all, it was very far away. The colonies were tolerating in the beginning all the discriminatory policies of trade. Why? Because they were dependent on England for their security from France. So on the other day, France also was making colonies. 
So to take security from France, they were accepting all the policies of England. Why? They had a fear that France will attack from Canada, which was the colony of France and might acquire more colonies. But slowly, slowly, the relationship between England and America started spoiling, started becoming sour. Now how? What happened? France was defeated by England in the Seven Years' War. Seven Years' War, students you all have learnt in ninth standard. Huh? So, when France was defeated and the Canada was transferred to England, huh? till then Canada was ruled by France. It was a French colony. But later on, it was transferred to England by the Treaty of Paris in 1763. So now what happened? The fear which the Americans had that France might attack from Canada, this came to an end. So students, what happened now here? Now the Britishers thought that let us have a nice control over America. So they began to tighten their imperialistic control. Huh? And what they started saying that we fought the seven years war for your security, for your protection. Huh? So England suffered financial crisis when England and France were fighting seven years war. And they started saying that this war we fought for your sake, so now we are going to recover the money from you all. So what did the Britishers do? They passed number of laws to collect the revenue. So England argued now, saying what? That yes, we had fought the war for your sake, so now we are going to recover it from you all. So in the near future, number of laws were passed. Let us see this, students. So, the policy of taxation of England. Number of acts were imposed on the colonies. During whose rule? During the rule of King George III. He was the ruler of England. So, during his rule, number of laws were passed. First one was the Sugar Act. Now, so many questions come. What was this act? When was it introduced? The, it was passed in 1764. Sugar Act in 1764. Now, what was this? This was introduced on the sugar which was imported to the colonies from West Indies. So that what is going to happen? The rate will increase with the tax. Uh, and so, they will not, people will not buy from West Indies. This was the hidden agenda. So, the Sugar Act was passed for the sugar which was coming from West Indies. Second act was the Stamp Act. Very interesting, students. Uh, this was passed very next year, that is in 1765. 1764 Sugar Act. 1765 Stamp Act. Ah, now, what was this Stamp Act? Here, the duty was imposed on any kind of written document. Like what? For example, like newspapers, pamphlets, legal documents, ah, and even students' simple thing like playing cards, which are allowed to play. Uh, even on the playing cards, the Stamp Act was introduced. So now, do you all think the colonists are going to keep quiet? No. The colonists argued the British Parliament had no representative from America. And how can you all impose taxes on us? Huh? Why? People started arguing. We are not having our colonial representative. Huh? What is a representative, students? See, when Goa is having a state legislative assembly, we have our representatives from each constituency who will put up our problems before the assembly. 
or even in the panchayat we have the member of our ward who will put up our problems in the panchayat similarly your representative was essential in the british parliament but this was not there so the colonists said there are no representatives so how can you all impose taxes and so the colonists started to boycott they started saying that we are not going to pay any taxes neither we are going to buy goods from the british so this was a very important decision students even in the indian history you all know that we had started boycotting the british goods next in this slide students you all can see how people are saying no taxation without representation this was a very important slogan given by the americans ha huh? they are saying yeah no sugar act no tea act no stamp act no taxes we are going to pay a very important slogan students what did they say no taxation without representation ha huh? that means what once again i am telling ah uh, we are not going to pay any taxes unless and until we have our representatives in the parliament see students once again you all can see ah uh, the colonies claimed no taxation without representation because they were being taxed but had no vote in parliament and no say in how the colonies will be governed ha so the britishers will govern them as in how they want then so what did the people do they boycotted the british goods they said they started refusing to pay any taxes next important act even after refusing was the townshend act in 1767 now on what was this imposed this was also imposed on simple things like glass paper and paints very simple things students but on this also they were imposing duties and they were collecting the revenues last one and the important act which was passed was the tea act your students you all can see in 1773 so what is tea act now according to the tea act the east india company students you all are familiar with east india company you all have east india company had also come to india so you all know that so east india company got the monopoly to carry tea trade with the colonies now what is monopoly that means only and only east india company can sell the t to the american colonies and nobody else so whatever rate they are going to sell it people had to buy it ha so people were very surprised you can see here that even on t act was passed t act now students history lesson cannot be without a story as i tell, told you all nice story we are going to see about the incident in american war of independence that is boston tea party now when the britishers imposed tax tea act that is they took the monopoly of the tea trade ha huh? first of all they were all worried with this they thought something we have to do to oppose this now and when the ship came where where did the ship come ha uh, from the it came to the boston harbor ha uh, now it was damn sure that people had to buy this tea now but people did not like this monopoly ha uh, what is monopoly students once again i am repeating this ha uh, that means nobody else can have the tea trade with america now here when the ship came students very easy to remember ah the ship is coming at the boston harbor the ship is full with the tea boxes ah uh, and when the ship came the people of america said we don't want this tea go back from here ah uh, but the 
people from the ship did not listen. Uh, they were not ready to go back. They said, you all are supposed to have take this tea only, have trade with this only. But now the group of colonists, they dressed up as red Indians so that nobody will identify them. And they entered the ship. And what did they do? After entering a very important incident, students, they removed the tea boxes and they dumped it into the sea. Now the question arises here, huh, that did they have so much power? Yes, students, they showed the daring to throw the tea boxes into the sea. And this incident is famous in America as Boston Tea Party. Boston Tea Party. Now you all might think, for whom teacher it was a party? Huh? This was a party for the fishes in the sea actually. Okay, but the most important part we have to remember is monopoly of tea trade was there, so it was opposed. People took the tea boxes when the ship came and they dumped it into the sea so that no more you all can have a trade with us with that tea. Your students, you all can see the people throwing the boxes into the sea. This is Boston Tea Party. Now, when the people did this incident, Boston Tea Party, what were the effects of it? Did the Britishers keep quiet? Definitely no. Uh, so to penalize the colonists, what happened? Boston port was closed. Means what? No other ships also are going to come here in the Boston port. Then number of repressive measures were passed by the British Parliament to control the Americans. The rebellion which was going on in America. But what happened? The more they were tying trying to control, the more the people were coming together huh, with the feeling of anti-colonial attitude. So students, just like in India, when they started to divide Bengal, huh, there was a partition of Bengal in 1905. Huh, they started to divide us and more and more Indians started coming together in the similar way the anti-colonial attitude of England brought the colonies closer and now they were more determined to fight against the British. Now, what have we learnt in this lesson, students? We saw how America was discovered by three important explorers, John Cabot, Columbus and Amerigo Vespucci. Then we saw the causes of the American War of Independence. Now what is this? What were the causes? Ah, the Sugar Act, Stamp Act, Tea Act, Townshend Act and the incident of Boston Tea Party. This all come under the causes of the geographical discoveries. So with these students, we are ending the first part of this lesson. Thank you students. In the next part, we will see about the major events of the American War of Independence and we are going to see the significance of American War of Independence. Thank you students.